It is a Saturday night in Milwaukee. Thumbs up, says the Fonz. Great to have you with us on WMLW tonight. It's the Florida Marlins and the Milwaukee Brewers. It is game three of this four-game series, the penultimate home game of the regular season here tonight. Chris Narvison on the mound for the Brewers. He'll match up against Chris Volstad of the Florida Marlins. He's coming off a complete game shutout his last time out against the St. Louis Cardinals. And hi, everybody. We welcome you from Miller Park. Brian Anderson along with Bill Schroeder. Great to have you with us on WMLW. Last night, the Brewers winning again. 6-2 to two was the final score. Rocket, it was an impressive pitching performance. They used six pitchers total, but the rookies were stellar last night, starting with Mark Rogers. Penultimate, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see these young kids coming in here. Mark Rogers, Jeremy Jeffress just throwing smoke and throwing fastballs right by these guys. You had McClendon coming in there doing a nice job locating the fastball in the slider. You had Braddock coming in. These guys looking very good coming up from the minor leagues, and it's really good to see the future of this maybe starting rotation and bullpen going forward. These guys can swing uh, really so hard. Well, we'll see about the offense. The stakes are on the grill, as they say. RBIs are plenty for Casey McGee, Corey Hart, and Ryan Braun. Can they get to 100? We'll talk about them when we continue. all your home improvement needs at Menards. By Toyota, your Metro Milwaukee Toyota dealers. By Oneida Casino, get yourself in the game. Play slots, table games, and bingo at Oneida Casino. Fun is our game. And by Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. We are just about set for baseball tonight. The Marlins and the Brewers game three of this series and a trio of Brewer hitters Approaching a significant milestone offensively. Casey McGee with 99 RBIs to start play today. Corey Hart is at 96. And Ryan Braun is at 96 as well. So triple-digit RBIs is always a hallmark in baseball offensively. And those three players have a chance to do it this year. And Rock, this is a ball club. The only stat that really matters, let's be frank, is the wins and the losses. But some special individual accomplishments available for three players in this lineup this year and you know if you talk to each one of these three guys they don't really care too much about these individual you know milestones of course you know when the season's over they're going to look back and say yeah i was able to drive in 100 runs and case mcgee and Corey hart those two guys have been the story given you know their spring training didn't swing the bat all that well but ryan braun just continues to really show what he's made of i mean a very good august and he's having putting together a very good 
month of September after missing a game getting hit by the elbow. It's the Ryan Braun as usual. I mean, here's a guy that really wants to hit 300, drive in those 100 runs. You know, the RBI, the, the home runs have been down just a little bit for Brawny, but apparently no problem with that elbow because he was going to right field, pulling the ball, really had no problem getting the bat to the baseball last night. It's been since Harvey's wall bangers since we've had at least three with 100 RBIs. How about the starting pitching? It's been outstanding in the month of September. A team ERA for the starters at 2-6-3 this month. They'll try to keep it going. It's Chris Narvison on the mound tonight. Stay with us. Fifties here tonight for the Brewers and the Florida Marlins. Feels like fall baseball. Neither one of these teams will be headed to the postseason. The Marlins under Edwin Rodriguez trying to finish above 500, but two losses in the series already to the crew. They are a game under at this point. Lineup is brought to you by Toyota. It's Cameron Maven leading off. Ozzy Martinez again starting at short. Logan Morrison in the three hole. Dan Ugla, four straight years of 30 or more homers. Gabby Sanchez at first base, Mike Stanton at right field, and then it's Wes Helms, the former Brewer, Brad Davis, and then Chris Polstad rounding it out. Well, let's check out the Lexus scouting report on Chris Narvison. He's given up 28 earned runs in 26 starts this year, including four his last time out against the Giants. Didn't fare all that well in only four and two thirds innings, but. He's been swinging the bat well at 311 batting average with seven RBIs. He's another bat in that lineup for Ken Maka. And here is how the Brewers will line up defensively behind Narvison, brought to you by Menards. Alcides Escobar returns to the starting lineup tonight. As Ken Maka has said, he's been down in the repair shed trying to work on a, uh, a flaw in his swing. As you check the numbers for Chris Narvison this year. His second career start against the Florida Marlins, and he is making a bit for his 12th win of the season. 
Giovanni Gallardo is the team leader in that category. He won his 14th earlier on this homestand. Set for baseball in Milwaukee, and that is going to be a saying that we're going to run out of after tomorrow. The final home game of the season tomorrow at a matinee with the Marlins. We hope you'll make plans to join us here at Miller Park tomorrow. They'll shut the doors until next April for opening day 2011. Cameron Maben with eight homers, 27 RBIs. Off the end of the bat, and that's going to fall a base hit to center field. So the Marlins get a leadoff single to get the game started tonight. Well, Chris Narvison, when he's been good, his changeup has been a good pitch for him. He took a little off the fastball right here. 87 miles an hour. Maven off the end of the bat, but able to dump it into center field. Slider and curveball have been good pitches for Chris Narvison. That is up until his last time out. Got roughed up a bit against the Giants. Yeah, Narvison giving up a grand slam to the San Francisco Giants last weekend. There's a push bunt, and that one is going to roll foul. That was from Jose Guillen of the Giants. Could have gone a lot differently for Narvison. Never know if he gets a strike three called in that first inning, but Rock, really, the first inning continues to be a nemesis inning. For Narvison this year, and usually when he's good, he gets through the first. That's one of those things that, uh, as we talk about, every time he takes the mound, it, it's it's a mental thing. You, you don't know. It's something that they've tried to, you know, vary his warm-up routine just a little bit. But once he gets through that first inning, maybe first second inning, Narvison seems to be able to settle down. But it's tough to recover from a first inning grand slam. That's what happened to him last time. Well, that was a series the Brewers did win two out of three from the Giants. They came home, dropped two of three from the Reds. They have won the first two in this series, and the Brewers have currently won three straight. Good looking changeup from Narvison. That's a key pitch for Chris Narvison. And you figure that changeup will play right into the hands of the free swinging Florida Marlins. Yeah, they like to attack fastballs early in the count. That changeup looks like a fastball, but never gets there. You get the swings and misses. You get them off the end of the bat. In the air to center field. Here is Lorenzo Cain, and one away. The first out for Narvis in the day. And they get that changeup into the head of those hitters, and uh, all of a sudden that 89 to 91 mile an hour fastball a little bit quicker. Narvis in trying to establish that pitch early in the first inning. Well, we mentioned the starting pitchers on the way out of the open, and Chris Narvison certainly doing his part in the month of September. A 2.63 ERA in the month of September for the starters that covers 130 innings. The problem: the Brewers are 10 and 11 during that stretch, getting great pitching in the month of September, but it has not translated into wins. The Brewers have had a hard time swinging the bats this month. Until the last three games. And in each of the last three games, the Brewers are in double digit hit totals. At 19 hits against the Reds on Wednesday, an 8 3 win Thursday night with 15 hits. Then last night, a 6 2 win, 13 more hits. Maven takes off, no throw made by Lucroy. Stolen base for Cameron Maven, his ninth. Yeah, he guessed right. Narvis in a decent move to first base. He's Got to hold the leadoff hitter on a little bit better than that. First move, Maven takes off, and Kataris just eats it. Why bother? Great jump. He is nine out of 11 now in steal attempts. Now the Marlins have a runner in scoring position for Logan Morrison. Base hit to right. Hart is up with it. Here comes Maven. He's going to try to score. The throw to the plate is late, and Maven scores the run. One to nothing, Florida. As Logan Morrison drives in his 17th. Yeah, this guy made, Morrison has been money against left-handed pitching this year. I mean, incredible numbers. He's hitting 362 before this at bat against Narvison against left-handed pitching. Nice easy stroke. Stands up there very confidently. 
Not a lot of movement in that swing and hits a rope in the right field. Maybe with good speed able to score. That ball just died in the infield once it took the first hop. As Logan Morrison's father, he's here watching his son this week. Morrison had his 42 game on base streak snapped last night. That is the longest in baseball this year. It's the longest in the National League by himself. And he tied with Mark Teixeira for the longest of the season. And he missed a Florida Marlins record by four games. After he took the collar last night, he was 0 for 4. Yeah, that's still a pretty impressive streak. He's got a good eye at the plate. He's got a pretty swing up there at the plate. Very good at going to left field. And very, very good against left handed pitching. We talked about that already. So the Marlins strike early tonight. An RBI single from Morrison. Here is Dan Ugla. Little broken bat floater. Weeks has it. Morrison able to get back. An awkward looking soft line drive. Weeks jumped a little early, but athletic enough to come up with the catch. Yeah, good change up again by Narvison. Had a little bit of movement going away from Ugla, and Ugla got it right off the end of the bat. Not hit all that well. Fooled Ricky just a little bit, but hey, he caught it. Had a play just like that last night. Perfectly timed his leap. So two men are out. Here's Gabby Sanchez. A rookie of the year candidate in the National League this season. Sanchez with 19 home runs 81 driven in this season. But is hitless in this series at this point he's 0 for 8. Sanchez leads all major league rookies in doubles RBIs. Extra base hits and total bases. Statistically, he's right there. He's going to have a tough time pulling votes away from Buster Posey of the Giants and Jason Hayward of the Atlanta Braves, two teams that are in postseason contention. And two players in Hayward and Posey who are significant contributors to their respective offenses. Little bouncer to McGee. Goes to second and they get Morrison. So the inning is over, but the Marlins score. And it's one to nothing fish. Here come the Brewers. Left in 2010. Here's the Toyota lineup for the Milwaukee Brewers that's turned in by Ken Maka. Weeks, Hart, and Braun at the top of the order. Last night, Braun drove in three runs. He has 96 RBIs for the year. In the middle, it's fielder McGee and Kane with Escobar, Kataris, and Narvison rounding it out. And Alexis Scatter report on right hander Chris Volstad. He struggled on the road this year. 
a 624 earned run average compared to 261 at home. Is that a rough September? A six earned run average. And that includes a complete game shutout his last time out. One pitch, one out as Weeks bounces to short. Defensively, the Marlins have Logan Morrison, Cameron Maven, and Mike Stanton in the outfield. With Wes Helms, Ozzy Martinez, Dan Ugla, and Gabby Sanchez around the horn. Brad Davis does the catching. Steve Bernard's Marlins defense. Two complete games this year for Volstad, and as Rock mentioned, a shutout his last time out, beating Chris Carpenter in the St. Louis Cardinals. And a double digit winner this year in the big leagues. Volstad, a former number one draft pick by the Marlins back in the 2000. And five draft as Corey Hart bangs one back up the middle of base hit. And the numbers for Volstad as we talk about 10 and 9, a 482 in run average. You know, the Marlins have won eight of his last 10 starts. So he has figured out a way to keep the Marlins close and they've been able to win some games. He's a big guy, 6'8, 195 pounds, tall and slender. The minor league pitcher of the year in the Marlins organization in 06. A 6 7 Volstad. He looks to be a bright young star in this game. Trying to get him to put all the pieces together. Hart takes off, breaking ball down and out. The throw to second is in time. A good throw. And Corey hasn't been running a whole lot this year. You can see the lead, decent lead, and a decent jump. Just seems like he couldn't get going. Tough pitch to throw on for Davis, and right on the money. It had to be perfect, and it was. So after the base hit, Hart is thrown out trying to steal. And a good throw from the Marlins catcher, who began the year as the Triple A backup. Marlins have had their trouble with. Catchers keeping them healthy this year. Yeah, they're four deep right now with Davis behind the plate. Former Brewer Mike Rivera on the roster right now. He spent most of the year in double A for the Florida Marlins. How about that one? Ryan Braun with two away. There's Mike Rivera, always a, a favorite among the players and the broadcasters. Always like seeing Mike Rivera. Friend of show. Yeah. Always good for a sound bite or two. Great personality. Yeah. He's always kind of known as the the sheriff of fashion with the Brewers. And uh, mostly he stayed firmly on Mike Vassallo and uh, his daily attire, which mm -hmm. was always good for a few laps. Good to see Mike Rivera back in the big leagues. He's lost a lot of weight. Yes, he has. He said playing down in the Southern League this year, <laughs> he was in Chattanooga. Because he had a hard time keeping his weight on this season. I'd say he had a good year with the Brewers when he was backing up Jason Kendall. An incredible year, both defensively and swinging the bat, but uh, spent the whole year in the minor leagues this year. Braun pops it up, shallow right. Mike Stanton coming in. And the side retired. Brewers get a hit, but a caught stealing. We head to the second.
Milwaukee. Chris Narvison back on the mound. He allowed a run and two hits in the first inning, an RBI single by Logan Morrison, facing the 20 year old rookie Mike Stanton. The Rock, we have a new postseason entrant. The Texas Rangers beat the Oakland Athletics today, 4 to 3, and thus securing the American League West Division Championship. So they'll join the Minnesota Twins in the playoffs. It is official. Yep, Minnesota and Texas will play either New York or Tampa Bay. Two pretty tough teams to get through, but yeah, congratulations to Ron Washington and his group. And former Brewer pitching coach Mike Maddox. And my brother Mike, scout with the Rangers. So that's a big day for the Texas Rangers. Their first postseason since 1999, their first division championship since 1999. Never been to a World Series, right. the Texas Rangers. Uh, no uh, secrets about who's going to make it to the postseason. In the American League, it's going to be Tampa Bay and New York, and it's going to be now officially the Rangers and the Twins. But there is still a lot to decide. Namely, best record in the American League. The Twins are still in that picture. The Twins, the Rays, and the Yankees. The Rangers have never been out of the first round in the postseason. And you figure they'll team up Cliff Lee. And C.J. Wilson yep. to start their postseason. A couple of left-handers. Yep, tough customers though. That American League East. Either one of those two teams are going to be tough to get through. But hey, you never know. Stanton swings and misses. The pitch is off the glove of Lucroy, and secures the out. Stanton didn't run right away. Frustrated at the strikeout, and that bought Kataris enough time to make the play. Yeah, good change up. Ball went off of George's glove, and Stanton never knew it. Got to the screen, or or it got by George. Check it out. A little bit upset with himself, and had he gone right away, might have been safe at first base. Edwin Rodriguez might be something for tomorrow. Typically, managers with young players they'll. You know, take a day, then maybe tomorrow at the batting cage. Hey, you know, when you swing and miss, might as well, you know, get on your horse a little bit. See that ball end up to the screen. And yeah, from what we've seen from the Marlins and Mike Stanton, it's not a group that kind of indulges it at all. They run pretty hard, right? It's one of those that, uh, hey, you know, it looks bad, but normally you're not going to do much about it anyway. Been impressed with the Florida Marlins. The one disappointment they have is Hanley Ramirez, who is out with an elbow injury, all star shortstop, and seems like perennially, perennially an MVP candidate, but he is unable to play. He has an, a batting average of an even 300 right now, but an elbow that does not allow him into the lineup. They're mm. saying he might be done for the season. Yeah. As big Tex Wes Helms takes a call at strike three. Well, change up gets Stanton and a big curveball gets Wes Helms. Wes Helms will always be a friend of the Brewers. You know, big home run last year against the Mets. Or I should say in 08 to get the Brewers to the postseason. After most Sunday Brewer home games, kids 16 and under can run the bases at Miller Park. Compliments of great clips for ticket information. Call 414 902 4000 or visit Brewers.com. That one's hit well right center field. Brad Davis sending Kane to the wall. He reaches out and he's got it. Lorenzo Kane, another spectacular catch. He is racking up quite a highlight reel of defensive gems. What a play that was. The rookie Lorenzo Kane brings him to their feet at Miller Park.
Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. And by American Furniture, Electronics, and Appliances. Bring it home. I thought about covering a lot of ground in the outfield. Lorenzo Kane going deep into the alley out there in front of the wall in right center. Able to brace himself this time. Remember, early in the year, he went into the gap in left center and crashed into a fence. And so you know he can go both right and left. So he's got good range out there in center field. Boy, what a great play it was. Lorenzo Kane quickly making a name for himself in the outfield. His fielder sends one deep right center, but this. Is playable for Maven. And one away here in the second inning. Another look. Look how much ground he covers. Yep, long strides. He looks like a gazelle out there. Covers a lot of ground in a short amount of time. And able to haul it in. Able to protect himself this time. Pitcher's best friend. Good defense. Oh, and kudos to our. Great audio crew led by Eric West. You could hear him slam up against that wall out there in right center. It's fun to watch home runs, but it's great to see outstanding defensive plays as well. And we've seen a number of them from Lorenzo Kane this season. And yeah, there's been some good center field play. We've seen some good plays by Jim Edmonds and Carlos Gomez and Lorenzo Kane might have the catch of the year out there in center field. Jason McGee rolls to short and the second out of the inning. Two, up, two down here in the second. That was Cincinnati, wasn't it? Yep. As a matter of fact, we take you back to Cincinnati, August 30th. And for my money, that's the best play of the year right there as he goes crashing into that chain link fence, risking life and limb to make a catch. Now, that chain link fence, I think, protected him somewhat and minimized what damage could have happened had he done that here. It might have been a different story. So Kane bats with two away. Still looking for his first major league home run. Hitting 261. It was back on Wednesday. Lorenzo Kane had a career night at the plate, had four hits. It tied a Brewers rookie record, franchise record. Kane with four hits, two doubles. He scored twice. Just reminds you of Devon White. When you see him make plays like that, you see the stride. You talked about how he he gets to full speed so smoothly, and it's kind of the way Devon White used to do it. Yeah, Devo and I were uh, teammates with the Angels back in the late '80s and uh, early '90s. He was a Brewer, was Devon White. Nobody more graceful in the outfield than Devon White. You're right. Kane is down on strike, so Chris Volstead off to a good start, giving up this one hit. One to nothing, Marlins, as we go to the third.
Good look at the hat. Creative. Chris Volstad leads off for the Marlins. 9 1 and 2 do up against Chris Narvison. A matchup of Chris's tonight. Volstead can fill up a batter's box, can he? <laughs> at 6 7, yes. probably closer to 6 8. Yeah, from the back, he's 6 8, listed at 6 8 in the uh, media guide. It'll pop up, fielder gives it a look, and it's in the dugout. He's six eight, and I think I said 195. He's filled out just a little bit. That was an old uh, source I was looking at. He's 232 right now in the uh, Marlins media guide. That was his signing weight. It's hard to be six eight and under 200 pounds. That's right. <laughs> Two balls, two strikes on Volstad. Has four hits this year. He doesn't hit much. It's four for 48 at the plate. And a fly ball to center field. Lorenzo Kane squeezes it for out number one. Back to the top of the order now. Cameron Maben will hit. The San Diego Padres have won again. They have beaten the Cincinnati Reds the first two games in that series. Earlier today, the Cardinals lost to the Cubs. And it dropped Cincinnati's elimination number to three, their magic number. But the Reds have not been able to find the winner's circle in San Diego. A couple of close games. Last night, it was Miguel Tejada with a couple of late RBIs in the seventh inning. Proved to be the game winner. Today... Chris DeNorfia delivered the walk-off double against Aroldis Chapman, hanging a loss on the big lefty. Yeah, well, at least he proved to be hittable. Chapman set a a record as far as data goes with this current system, this pitch FX system. He threw a pitch last night, 105.1 miles an hour. Today he takes a loss. That's pretty good, isn't it? I was watching a little bit of that game last night. Chapman struck out Adrian Gonzalez, and he struck him out on three straight fastballs. His first fastball was 101, then 102, the next one, and then 103 after that. And our buddy Mark Grant, he said, "Well, at least he changes speeds." <laughs> <laughs> Started him out with a changeup. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. There's a hot one over the head of Weeks. And a base hit as Cameron Maven singles his second hit. I'll tell you that uh, San Diego Padres club about a week ago looked like they were running on fumes and not much left in the tank, but they started to turn things around again. Well, they're getting production from everyone. You know, it's not just a couple of guys, and certainly Adrian Gonzalez is the focal point of that offense, but they have Ryan Ludwig there now, Miguel Tejada. You know David Eckstein is a gamer. You know what you're going to get out of David Eckstein. But guys like Chris DeNorfia and Tony Gwynn Jr., they're all contributing. And that's what it takes down the stretch. You can't rely on the same guys all the time. Guys that are going to be pitched around, and guys at the bottom of the order are going to have to produce. Cincinnati's had a tough time closing that division out. They've now lost three straight. Yep. Brewers beat them in that final game of the series, and they dropped the first two in San Diego. Cincinnati still has a magic number of three. Only a matter of time, but until it's done, you don't feel good about it. You don't feel like you're there. Certainly Dusty Baker doesn't want to hear about the Reds in the postseason just yet. Remember the Brewers will match up with Cincinnati the final three games of the regular season. Wouldn't that be something if the Brewers could get to Cincinnati. It's a long way to go now. I mean the Cardinals are struggling so yeah. bad. Yeah they made no uh, indication that they're going to put any pressure on the Reds at all. 
But if St. Louis gets hot and the Reds don't win, the Brewers could have a big say in that, that last series. A lazy fly ball to left. Braun makes a catch. Two men are out in the third. Let's give you a little celebration footage from the Texas Rangers. Their first American League division title in the West since 1999. Neftali Feliz came on and saved it. Terrific rookie closer for the Texas Rangers. And congratulations to Ron Washington and Mike Maddox, Jackie Moore. Jackie Moore is the bench coach. He was one of the original Brewers coaches. And congratulations to that guy. Well, the Brewers saw the Rangers this year at Miller Park. Looked like a pretty good team then. The Brewers saw them in interleague play. Well, Texas could end up with a a double digit lead in that division. Not that it matters now that they've clinched, but that's how good a season they've had, the Texas Rangers. Matter of fact, they have the only winning record in the American League West. Oakland is now at an even 500 with that loss today. Now the question is. The Rangers with a little over a week to prepare for the postseason. Can they advance past the first round for the first time in their franchise history? You gotta like your chances with Cliff Lee on the mound. Especially from what we saw of Cliff Lee last year in the playoffs with the Phillies. Yeah, and certain guys just seem to rise to the occasion when it means the most. You have that playoff experience, you you know how to respond. You know what to what to expect in the postseason, and uh, there's no replacing that when you get to this time of the year. And that rubs off on the rest of the team. Well, most managers will tell you if you get to the postseason and you have two horses. C.J. Wilson is pitching like an ace. If you have two guys, you can make it through. If, th if those two pitchers win their games because of the off days. And the way the playoffs are kind of spread out, anything you can have can, a shot. Anything can happen in the best of five. You're right. Strike called. Narvison rings up Logan Morrison. The inning is over. Narvison gives up a one-out hit, but that's it. One to nothing, Marlins. The Marlins lead the Brewers as we head to the bottom of the third inning. And joining us here in the booth is the Milwaukee Brewers minor league pitcher of the year, Jake Odorizzi, 20 years of age, sitting here with us, part of the no hitter this year. Congratulations. Uh, tell us about your season and.
tell us about winning this award? Um, the season was great. You know, we had a good team. Uh, we didn't finish as well as we'd like to, but uh, we all played good. We played solid all year round, but we just couldn't, you know, finish it out late in games and stuff like that. But uh, the award means a lot. I mean, for me, it's more of a team oriented goal because you know I can only do so much I need the team to back me up I need them to hit play defense everything like that so and in part you know this is all kind of credit to them and our, their hard work this year too tell us about the no hitter that had to be a big deal for you it's got to be uh, one of your top uh, you know baseball moments yeah that would uh, be today the best baseball moment so far um, you know didn't feel anything special that day nothing overwhelming just normal and went out there and Everything seemed to click. Everything worked. It was just an all-around good day. Good things happened. So when you were in the bullpen, you didn't say, hey, I got some uh, good stuff here today. Something <laughs> I have big no might happen stuff here. Today. Yeah. yeah, I didn't. I mean, I felt good. I didn't know it was going to be that good. But, you know, just like I said today, that's by far the best start I've had. Jake Odorizzi is with us, the Brewers minor league pitcher of the year. And uh, it's great to have Jake. We saw Jake earlier this season, and uh, he was here at Miller Park. Uh, Honoring the no hitter, and it was great to be able to kind of keep connected to you uh, just an hour and a half away up in Appleton. And how is it for a player to be in single A in the Midwest League, but so close to the mothership here in Milwaukee? Yeah, we have a joke going, we're so close, but yet so far away still. <laughs> That's our running joke up in Appleton, but no, it was definitely exciting. Uh, now it is off the glove of Martinez and George Kataris at first base. Just to know you're that close to Milwaukee and stuff like that. We get, uh, you know, we had some rehabbers. Gomez came up and Supon when he was here came up and so did Doug Davis. It was just, uh, it's pretty, it's kind of overwhelming to know you're this close and you have this much fan support up here. So you know how much people care about the game of baseball up in Milwaukee. Not Great. many days off. Uh, do, you, do you ever get a chance to come to a game? The only time I came was when we got honored by the no-hitter. Right. The days off were few and far in between. So when you got them, you had to savor them. And the last thing you want to do is see another game, <laughs> See right? more baseball, right? <laughs> Now, uh, Jake's from Illinois, Southern Illinois, down by St. Louis. Yes, like you said. And uh, so, what's your off season like at this point? Um, right now, I'm in uh, Phoenix, working out of the Junior Fall League team. Me and uh, Eric, who you'll be talking to in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're heading back tomorrow morning to get back to uh, our team. And I'll be pitching on Monday when I get back there. So it's kind of here for a while, then gone for a while. Marlins get the lead out at second base. Narvison reaches on a fielder's choice. Well, Jake Odorizzi this year as a starting pitcher went seven and two and a 3-2-0 earned run average. And you're already getting a glimpse of what baseball fans are like in Wisconsin. And that's a great ballpark in Appleton as well. What can you tell us about life in the Midwest League this season. I mean, it was great. We uh, we had a lot of fan support. They came when it was cold, came when it was hot, when it rained. I mean, they're out there no matter what. They're tailgating early on between uh, before the game even started. You know, just like today, uh, when we got here about 3 o'clock, there was, you know, half the parking lot was filled up with barbecues <laughs> and coolers, and everyone was having a good time. So, uh, you know, you just get to see just how much people love baseball up here and savor it and especially up here in Milwaukee they you know they definitely enjoy it. You know compare the uh, clubhouse in Appleton to the clubhouse here in Milwaukee. Did you have a chance <laughs> to talk to any of the pitchers? I mean I talked to guys? The, yeah I talked to a lot of the guys that I knew in the locker room and everyone came up and congratulated me and you know they were very nice about everything. They said I was back again like I was a, almost a fixture here now but <laughs> you know they're all very nice and all the minor leaguers that I talked to that I knew they were you know same congratulations how you doing all that all that type of stuff tell us about your family I know this is a, a proud moment for them to be the the minor league pitcher of the year and I'm sure they had a chance to, to see you quite a bit in the Midwest League and tell us about their reaction and uh, what what you said to them when you got the news um, when I broke it to him, my dad was you know he was the first one uh, that I told all of the family and he was you know very excited very happy about it and congratulatory he just said, you know you know, gets even prouder, all that type of stuff. So was mom. She was very happy, proud, all that type of stuff. And to have them be able to come up here along uh, along with my girlfriend, they came up today. And, you know, it's just nice being that close that they can come up and make the trip. Just, as, you know, a nice short weekend and come up and support me, which is uh, very nice. Now you have one guy that uh, is really a big uh, fan of yours, you know, our Jerry Augustine. You know, he's a brewer pitcher and used to be and works with us in Fox, Wisconsin. Every time he comes back from 
Appleton. He says, you know, I saw this kid, and he's going to be a good one someday. <laughs> Hopefully I can live up to his to what he tells you guys. Doesn't mean you're not, bad. It doesn't mean you're not a good one now, but you know, <laughs> down the road. Down the road, even better, right? Those are good eyes on you, though, Jerry Augustine. He's, he's got a good look at Jake Odorizzi this year. Jake Odorizzi, Brewers minor league pitcher of the year. Eric Komatsu was the player of the year. We're going to visit with Eric next half inning. As Weeks bounces one to second base, Dan Ugla makes a play. And the inning is over. Jake, congratulations, man. We hope to see you in the big league. Thank Real you soon. very much. I'm trying my best to get work. here. All right. Jake Odorizzi, Brewers minor league pitcher of the year. Game three of this series between the Brewers and the Fish. And it was started with a Logan Morrison RBI single. So far, that's the only scoring of this game. We have had a defensive gem, however. Take a look at this play by Lorenzo Kane in right center, crashing up against the wall. One of his many highlight reel catches this year. One to nothing is our score. Chris Narvison. Rolling right along here after giving up the first inning run. Now three strikeouts. And we are pleased to be joined now by the minor league player of the year, Eric Kamatsu. Congratulations, Brevard County, single Thank you A. Very much. What a thrill for you. It must be to uh, not only win the award, but to be able to come to Miller Park and show it off for everybody as Dan Ugly delivers a base hit. Tell us about the award and tell us about your season this year. Oh, it's, uh, it's an honor. You know, anytime you. Uh, Get something like this, it's a pretty big deal. So, uh, just to be here, you know, at Miller Park in front of uh, all the Brewer fans, uh, it's uh, pretty special. On base percentage for you, uh, incredible. Now, you know, I'm a guy that looks at stats, and everybody looks at different stats, but more walks than strikeouts, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, uh, this offseason, I really wanted to work on uh, my plate discipline, and, um, you know, this year was. Uh, Really good year, you know. Every um, every at bat, I went up, a, I went up to the plate, you know, having an idea of uh, you know what I wanted to do. And uh, fortunately, you know, it was a productive year. Stolen bases—that's a big part of your game. It's always good to have speed. Everybody needs stolen base uh, ability in the big leagues. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I just I credit to uh, my coaches, uh, my hitting coach Dwayne Hosey. You know, he was always always at first base, uh, giving us. Uh, you know, tips or keys on the pitchers. Um, Bob Missick at third base. Uh, you know, just a you know good year overall. You know, I like the the staff over there. My trainer, uh, Tommy Craig. You know, kept keeping me on the field. Eric Komatsu joining us, the uh, Brewers minor league player of the year, the Robin Young Performance Player Award this year in the Brewers minor league system down in Single A and Florida State League and. Uh, we just showed that catch Lorenzo Cain made your guys played a lot of center field a lot of outfield maybe you can give us a little perspective on how tough that is crashing into a wall like that man that was a great catch <laughs> no doubt uh, he had to run a far away for that one 
definitely um, you know, running full speed in the wall. It's not fun, uh, you know. But you know, the, the catch you made uh, a couple weeks ago was uh, pretty unreal. So you know, credit to Lo Kane. He's a uh, he's a pretty good uh, center fielder. Standing in your shoes not too long ago, and uh, here he is in the big leagues. And Walk us through this catch now. What's Lorenzo thinking right here as he gets to the wall? He's thinking, go for it. <laughs> Catch it and grips himself, right? Yep. He's thinking, ouch. No doubt. First thing that comes to your mind is go for it. Now, you spent some time in uh, Helena in the Pioneer League. Now, way back in the old days, I played in Butte. Now, Butte, they don't have a team anymore. Okay. But uh, I did the Pioneer League. It's, uh, is it the same as it was back then, I'd imagine? Um, Hadn't changed much? You know, Helena was a little rough. Uh, you know, I'm coming from California. That's so, well uh, said, by the way. You're learning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Helena was uh, definitely a slower, uh, slower lifestyle for you know, for baseball. But you know, you're there for baseball. You're there for uh, you know to progress as a player. And you know, sometimes you got to deal with you know your surroundings and adapt uh, accordingly. So. Not a lot of distractions in the Pioneer League, are there? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Eric played his college ball at uh, Cal State Fullerton and. Into the Brewers system, and uh, we asked Jake a moment ago about his offseason. What's your offseason like as a position player? And it, I'm sure it's different than that of a pitcher. Yeah, I'll, I don't know what he does, but uh, he said he doesn't do anything. <laughs> no, he's actually down in Arizona right now, and playing he's video games, continuing to pitch, probably. Yeah, no, we're both uh, we're both down there in uh, Arizona uh, doing this junior fall league. Um, but after that, you know, I uh, it's work. It's really it's not too much time off. Um, you know, I work out at a uh, training facility in Santa Barbara uh, called P3. Dr. Marcus Elliott, he runs that. Um, and, you know, that's uh, that takes up a bit of my week. When will you start hitting? When do you get a bat in your hands for the first time in the winter? Uh, I'll probably start in around December, maybe uh, later in December. Get through the holidays, enjoy. Now, what kind of an incentive is this for you to be here at Miller Park uh, during a game, seeing the guys going to the clubhouse? That's got to, that's got to give you a little bit of uh, extra incentive. Oh man, it's uh, something to look forward to. Definitely a little bit of motivation, you know, seeing uh, guys that I played with or you know guys in the minor leagues this year that are here now. It's uh, you know seeing how they're they're here, you know, in the clubhouse. Uh, great clubhouse, unreal. Um, it's just. It's where I want to be. You yeah, know. With, with the way baseball is today, I mean, you can be an A ball, double A, and all of a sudden they're the big leagues. You, you see it all exactly. the time. Exactly. You know, you never know. You're, you're one call away from, you know, double A now. So hopefully, uh, you know, next year I'll probably start in Huntsville, and um, hopefully I'll do well. And you never know. Hopefully be here as soon as possible. <laughs> Good season to build off of, for sure. Yeah, yeah, come on to uh, joining us, the Brewers Minor League Player of the, of the Year. Down in Brevard County, hit 323 this year. Good Eric. That one is in the air. Ricky Weeks wants it. And he's got it. Eric, great to have you, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Hope Appreciate to see you real soon in the big league. Good job. Thank you. Eric Kamatsu, everyone. We'll take a break. The Brewers.
fourth inning. That's a good way to get a date, actually, right? The chicken suit works everywhere. So can I get your number? Subway trivia. Who are the three players in Marlins history to win the NL Rookie of the Year award? They've had three of them in their career. The Brewers have had two. Pat Listash and Ryan Braun. Corey Hart leads off. He had a single his last time up. Hart, Braun, and Prince Fielder do up in this fourth inning. It's good to catch up with Eric Komatsu and Jake Odorizzi coming up from the minor league system. We hear these names all the time. It's great to actually put a face to the names. And, you know, Eric's coming out of college. Plays college ball at Cal State Fullerton. Jake out of high school. He's only 20 years old, Jake Coder is. Well grounded kids, it seemed like. You know, hard workers. And uh, you know, I know Harvey Keen very well. He's a scout for the Brewers. He's around the ballpark quite a bit. And uh, he signed Jake. I was going to ask Jake about uh, Harvey, but I uh, wasn't sure how much he knew of Harvey. But Harvey thinks a lot of Odorizzi. Yeah, Harvey was here earlier today. He was uh, here to present the trophy as Hart strikes out. Now, Jake Odorizzi is from Highland High School in uh, Southern Illinois. He was in that 08 draft. Yeah, Komatsu signed by Josh. Bolovsky. So, uh, you know, scouts, they travel quite a bit. They see the high schools, the colleges. Those are the guys that deserve a lot of credit, you know, for finding these kids. And you know, everybody gets the credit once they get to the big leagues, but uh, it is a thankless job being a major league scout. Well, you know, a proud day for those two, Harvey Keene Jr. and Josh Bolovsky. They've signed a couple of players who end up as the Pitcher and player of the year in the Brewers system. We we'll tip our hat to Bruce Side as well. Bruce Side is the Brewers director of amateur scouting, and he's been a part of the drafts that have brought those players into the system. Both of those guys were in the 08 draft, by the way. Komatsu went in the eighth round, and Odorizzi was. In that 2008 draft as well. 32nd overall pick. Oda Rizzi was. Well hopefully they'll make it here. Hopefully it won't take them long. Ryan Braun was drafted in 05. He was in the big leagues in 07. It's got to be encouraging for those two kids to come out here and see a lot of the Brewers minor league guys from this year up in the big leagues getting an opportunity, getting some valuable playing time, getting a lot of playing time as a matter of fact. That resonates down there. You can bet they see guys that they played with, they've, that they've been around in, in camp, whether it be spring training or in the minor league setting, they go and they see these guys have success. Guys like Lorenzo Kane. From a position player standpoint, Jonathan Lucroy makes it feel like they can do it too, and that's that's half the battle right there. Just believing in yourself that you can do it at the major league level. Fans, you can buy your tickets now for Brewers on Deck 2011. Sunday, January 30th is the date, and it's at the Frontier Airlines Center. It features autographs, interactive games for kids. Advanced tickets are on sale now. Plus, if you purchase by October 3rd. You get a voucher for a select Brewers home game next April. Call 414-902-4000 or visit Brewers.com slash on deck. That's a great event. Kind of gets us ready for the season. This fielder hits one high in the air to center. This is playable. And the side retired. Chris Volstad rolling along here tonight. We head to the fifth inning. One to nothing Marlins.
has been outstanding on the mound for the fish. He's faced just one over the minimum and is working on a shutout through four. To the fifth we go. Chris Narvison against Brad Davis. Robbed of extra bases by Lorenzo Kane in the second inning. What a great catch it was. Davis had two hits in the opener on Thursday. Cut it a miss. Behind the count one and two. And here's another example of a guy in the minor leagues wasn't even starting and now he's getting playing time every day for the Marlins in the big leagues. So you never know. Yeah, good things for young players down in the minor leagues to see. Let them know that there is a chance that at the drop of a hat they can be in the big leagues. Two and two the count on Davis batting eighth in this Marlins lineup. And the count goes full. Well, last night, Mark Rogers, after his three hitless, scoreless innings, said he had to battle some nerves. Last night, had a bunch of friends and family here from Maine. But Mark Rogers, part of a good run for the starting pitchers here lately. Randy Wolf on Wednesday went six innings, just one earned run against the Reds. Brewers got a ton of offense that day. And Wolf was a winner. Then Gallardo won his 14th game of the season Thursday, the opener of this Marlins series. Last night, Mark Rogers, after a shaky 30 pitch first inning, settled down with three scoreless. Then the bullpen took over. Jeremy Jeffress. With two scoreless innings. It's been a uh, tremendous month of September for this pitching staff. It really has. Really showing no signs of fatigue either. When you look at it, I mean, Randy Wolf, he's over 200 innings this year. Joe's been out there. He spent two weeks on a disabled list. But I mean, ordinarily, it's, you know, guys that have pitched all year, you know, start to uh, kind of break down, maybe lose a little bit on a fastball. But these guys seem to be getting better. Well, it's a good thing for the Brewers to see some success on the mound. It's been a rough season on the pitching front this year for the Brew Crew. But Gallardo's won 14. Randy Wolf at 13 wins. Chris Narvison is an 11 game winner this year despite an ERA over five. It's most encouraging to see. Big velocity last night from two of the young pups from the minor league system and Mark Rogers and Jeremy Jeffers. And then Zach Braddock came in. We've seen a lot of Zach this year since May, anyway. But uh, that gives you a little hope. Ryan Braun said as much last night. He said, I'm glad these guys are on our side. <laughs> great stuff. Well, the thing is, when you have guys come in there throwing 95 to 98 miles an hour, you can make some mistakes. You know, with your fastball. I mean, even, you know, when Yo's throwing his curveball, his 95, he's been getting up to 95. Actually, a lot of these guys are throwing harder now than they were early in the year. Not sure why that is. Well, Narvison's been throwing well. Capuano with the change up and a fastball away, but uh, very encouraging to see Mark Rowdy. He threw some pretty good breaking pitches for strikes as well. Rogers will get one more start, and that'll be in New York against the Mets, and uh, he'll. Get a chance to pitch a little closer to his hometown. Up in Maine. Not so much of a still a good ways away trip but down to closer. Milwaukee. A little closer. I ran into uh, Mark's uh, uncle, you know, in the uh, service level. I was walking out and uh, he looked like he had pitched three innings last night. <laughs> <laughs> he was still shaking. <laughs> it's That's hard great. on the family. Yeah, it's great. Good stuff. <laughs> I mean, we're not saying it's walking distance from City Field to Maine, but you get the idea. We might have a pretty hefty pass list. I'm not sure what the uh, you know dialect is up in Maine, but uh, his uncle sounded like he was from downtown Boston. <laughs> it's a little bit of that that chowed in him. Well, a, lot, a lot of Mark's family, they are in the lobster business. They set traps and. 
Matter of fact, Mark has done that as a, an off-season job throughout his professional career. Not anymore, but early in his career, he hauled those lobster traps. It's tough work, man. So that's not on your resume. You know, I was thinking about turning pro, but uh, I just didn't have quite enough experience. <laughs> I've never hauled a lobster trap, <laughs> but I'd like to. <laughs> tough work, I'll tell you. It is. I had some friends that were in the clamming business. Oh, is that right? In New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Working down on the dock. Tough work. Knee deep in, uh, in the ocean. You know, raking them out of the sand. Make a man out of you, B.A. That's right. Not that you're not already. Not oh, well. No lobsters down where I'm from. No. Just those little bitty ones. They Mud call bugs. them crawfish. Mud bugs. <laughs> those little mini lobsters. They're good, though. Crawdaddies. We can catch a bunch of those anytime you want. Chris Capuano starts tomorrow. It'll be his turn in the rotation. Brewers uh, basically have a six man rotation here for the last 10 days of the season. Got the Mets Monday through Thursday, then at Cincinnati Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then the season is over. Strike call. So Cameron Maben is down on strikes. That is number four for Narvison. The three players in Marlins history to win the NL Rookie of the Year award are Subway Trivia, Dontrell Willis, Hanley Ramirez, and Chris Coglin last year. And Coglin, we congratulate him, but I tell you what, Casey McGee made a pretty strong case. I thought last year might be uh, the year we'd see a pitcher win Rookie of the Year, to be honest with you. With Jay Happ, Randy Wells. But Coughlin won the award. McGee's numbers were right there. I mean, across the board, more RBIs, same amount of homers. Yep, going to be an interesting Rookie of the Year race in the National League again this year. A lot of good candidates, good crop of young players all around baseball this year. Marlins could have another rookie of the year. Got it picked off. Fielder hustles his throw. It's high. Escobar can't get the tag on him. A poor throw from Fielder over to second base. It'll be a stolen base. And Davis, the catcher, taking off on first move. Narvison with a good move, but not a very good throw by Prince. And the Marlins catcher able to steal a bag. A good throw. He's out easily. Close. But the high throw, which resulted in a high tag, is usually a safe call when it's bang bang like that. So Brad Davis with a second steal out at second base. And an 0 2 count to Ozzy Martinez. Filling in for the injured Hanley Ramirez. Up. That's playable. Fielder wants it. And the side will tie it. One to nothing. Good ball game going tonight. The Marlins lead. The Brewers trying to do something about that.
Fan appreciation night tonight at Miller Park. One to nothing. The Marlins lead as we head to the Brewers fifth inning. Chris Polstad has been outstanding. He threw a complete game shutout his last time out. And has ripped off four consecutive scoreless innings here tonight. Yeah, he's been locating pretty well. He's got a good two seamer going. He's been dropping that curveball in and you know, very similar stuff. But from the other arm, as we saw last night from Andrew Miller, you know, fastball, curveball, changeup. Same thing for Volstad, but he's right handed, doing a nice job keeping the ball down. He's got McGee down, a ball and two strikes. Count even to 2 2. Well, Volstad hoping to get to that 30 start plateau. He'll have a chance if he stays healthy. This is number 29 for him tonight. In the air to center. Maven will ease under it. One gone. Let's take you back to Volstead's last start. It was a makeup game between the Cardinals and the Marlins on Monday. Chris Carpenter was on the mound. Remember at the time, St. Louis is trying to fight their way back in the division. They had Carpenter on the mound, but Volstead shut the Cardinals down for nine innings. Yep, it was a quarter nothing win for the Marlins, and he threw 118 pitches, 78 of them strikes. Only struck out three, so he he got some outs early in the count. He pitched the contact. Doesn't matter how, it's just get it done. And that's what Volstad did his last time out. His second complete game of the season. Had a complete game against the Washington Nationals back in May as well. He's been tough on Kane. Struck him out last time up. By the way, that game Monday lasted one hour and 57 minutes. Carpenter actually pitched well. He gave up four runs, but he gave up a grand slam to Brad Davis early. A lot of swings early in the count, I'd imagine, an hour and 50 some minute. That's incredible. That's a quick game. That's a Greg Maddox type game. Yeah, I mean the way you know the way hitters going up there taking pitches these days, and that's a uh, lightning in a bottle a game like that. That is a perfect getaway day game right there. <laughs> Kane gets jammed. Martinez throws him out. Two go. WMLW is your home for college football this year. Every Saturday morning, starting at 11 a.m., with exciting gridiron games from the SEC and the MAC conferences. Next Saturday, it's Ohio University. They take on Eastern Michigan college football on WMLW. Saturday mornings at 11 on MLW. The game is on us. How about that one, pal? What's that, Rock? That game there that they just flashed up. A lot of games today in college football. See UCLA, Oklahoma Texas. Oklahoma is leading Cincinnati now 24 to 9. 34 to 12. What was that? Is that, uh, is that a typo? Penn State was in a tight one with Temple last I heard. <laughs> Alabama with a big comeback victory. Alabama. Over Arkansas. Number one, Alabama. What happened to the Horns today? In, uh, Florida. Have a good day today. The Badgers were impressive. I enjoyed he's watching in, the Badgers. He's in denial. So, anyway. <laughs> Who did Eastern Michigan play today? They had Ohio State. Is that right? Scored 72 runs against Eastern Michigan. As Escobar flies out. Points. <laughs> Stakes.
just not summer without them. And by Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. Chris Narvison back on the mound as we head to the sixth inning. The Marlins coming up, one to nothing, Florida. And Logan Morrison leading off. He is responsible for the only run of this game, an RBI single in the first inning. Narvison, since that first, has settled down. He's pitched a beauty. Five strikeouts now for Narvison. And he's given up just the one walk. <laughs> he falls down. And Escobar makes a play. I think Narvison did the right thing. He thought about swiping at it, but realized he's got a shortstop with pretty good range. Yeah, out there. He went down there trying to grab that baseball. And uh, good thing he did not because of the shift. That was an easy play for Escobar. Well, if he didn't put his glove down, he was going to put something down. And you pull the glove back, you end up on your seat. But a smart move from Narvison, even though he lost a few cool points right there. So one away. Anything for an out, Rock. Right. You got to do anything you can. It's all about the out. Dan Douglas singled. Off Narvison in the fourth. That one is hit to left, playable for Braun. Two outs. Well, a series of limited edition 600 saves lithographs are being produced and will be available for purchase in the team store later this week. Fewer than 150 will be available to the public, and the poster is the same artwork that was presented to Hoffman. By the Brewers to recognize the 600 save. The painting was created by noted artist Janet Olney. And several options for purchasing these posters in the team store. 51 copies. You get that? 51? 51. That's his number. Right. They've been autographed and numbered by Trevor. So you can get one of those for $250 unframed or in a frame for $500. And then there are 60 additional prints that are not autographed and they are unframed and they're $25 a piece. They might as well get the autographed one, right? Might as well. I mean, that's, uh, that's what it's all about. But what's great about all of this, and Trevor's been down there signing so much since September 7th, but a portion of the proceeds from the sale of the posters will support charities of Trevor Hoffman. Charities of his choice, especially those that end up on the auction at Brewers.com. Not unlike the Bill Schroeder jersey that went for auction for a whopping $900. It's not bad, is it? That's some star power right there, my friends. Gabby Sanchez flies out, inning over. Narvison three up, three down.
series. Logan Morrison put the Marlins on top of the first inning. Driving in Cameron Maben in the first. Maben had stolen a base. That set up the run. A great catch in this game in the second. Lorenzo Kane crashing against the wall. Robbing Brad Davis of extra bases. Since the first, Chris Narvison is seventh down. He's pitched a beauty tonight. Chris Volstad working on a shutout through five. And he has allowed just two Brewers hit, so we have a good old fashioned pitcher's duel tonight at Miller Park on WMLW. A little George Guitarist will lead off. A little bit of a delay here. They had to get the uh, the weenies off the field. Oh, is that right? Not the sausages. Right, the little cocktail weenies. They had the uh, kids <laughs> racing the second half of the race tonight. Takes a little bit longer to clear the field when they're involved. That can be awkward. I thought the, the little weenies raced on Sunday. What is today? Saturday. Or well, maybe just fan appreciation day, I guess. Right. Anything uh, special planned from the Brewers TV analyst for a fan appreciation day? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm not involved somehow. Well, there's an envelope right behind you. And, uh, an itinerary is in that envelope. Looks like you're going to have a busy night, Rock. We had a big group in the booth earlier today. Yeah. Always fun to get visitors in the booth, especially little kids when they come in. They see Rock. They run to the door. It's a base hit by Chris Narvison on the third hit of the game. And he's been on twice. Rock, you pointed it out. During the scouting report tonight that Narvison is a threat at the plate and he delivers another base hit. A 300 hitter and just about every one of the Brewer pitchers have cashed in. Even Mark Rogers last night with a base hit. Nick Gardo with a base hit. First game of the series and Randy Wolf his last start with two hits. That's not a bad pitch. Look at Narvison goes down and gets it. He looks like a hitter up there. He really does. So a base runner for Ricky Weeks, who has been the primary benefactor of the success at the plate by Brewers pitchers this year. You don't see many leadoff hitters pushing over 80 RBIs. Has 82 runs batted in this year, Ricky Weeks. That one's in the air. Ugla. Squeeze it for the out. Two gone. Say if you love Badger football and Badger sports, turn to CBS 58 every Sunday morning at 10 for the Badger Sports Report. The Badger Sports Report, your inside look at the Wisconsin Badgers. Sundays at 10 on CBS 58. How many runs did the Badgers score today, Rock? Yeah, look at that. Wow. 70. A couple of grand slams in that game. Austin P. I was talking to Corey Hart around the batting cage, and uh, he did not know the score of the game. You know, Austin P. Not too far from where Corey Hart lives in Clarksville, Tennessee. Right. Corey Hart from Kentucky. You know what the uh, the battle cry for Austin P is, right? No. Let's go P. <laughs> They're called the Governors, right? That's right. The Austin P Governors. Very good. I've been there. Now is that really the bat battle cry? Just no, it making is. That up? No, there's signs and everything. Really? Big, oh yeah, you walk into the to the facility. It's right there. There's the big chance going on. That's the truth. P E A Y. Correct. Let's go, P. Broken bat. Ugla takes it to the bag. Side retired. Volstad through six shutouts so far.
by Heiser Automotive Group. Heiser Automotive, where anything's possible, visit Heiser.com. And by Felco Windows, Siding, and Doors. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866-4-FELCO. There's a beautiful shot, one of the greatest ballparks in the land, Miller Park. All closed up tonight on a cool night in Milwaukee. Miller Lite, what's on tap? The Brewers and the Marlins for one last time here. Final home game of the season tomorrow. We're back on Fox Sports Wisconsin. And then it's off to New York, a four-game series with the Mets at City Field. On the air at 5:30 every day, Monday through Thursday. So I got a uh, bachelorette party going on up yeah. there. I'm expecting some rain in uh, the Big Apple. Bring your raincoat. Do they have a roof in uh, New York? No, like we do here. Rachel's bachelorette party. Well, we wish Rachel the best. I think that's Rachel right there. That one is hit well left field and that is going to go. Mike Stanton gives the Marlins a two to nothing lead as he belts his 21st home run of the year. The 20 year old rookie. Man, he's something else. I mean when he hits the baseball it jumps off his bat. We've been seeing that this entire series. He does have some holes in his swing. You can pitch to him but you make a mistake. He's going to hit him as far as anybody. There's that cut fastball that stayed middle of the plate. It was supposed to be away. Not going to get that one back. That one's hit well to right. Hart is back, and he's got it. A line drive out from Wes Helms. Think about this home run, Rock. I think he gets it a little bit off the end of the bat. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, not did. his best bolt by any stretch. And uh, second deck. Over the Friday's sports grill. And he's got big power. And there it is. A little off the end of the bat. Just missed the sweet spot, but he doesn't have to hit the sweet spot to get him out. He's like Prince. That's scary. We were watching Stan take batting practice the first night in. And he hit one out of Miller Park. He hit one to the right of Bernie's slide. Above the club goodwill sign out there. And the panels were open at that time and it it went out of the stadium. Now that's batting practice but. It's even more impressive because he's facing a 55 65 mile an hour pitch. That's all him. Yeah. Driving it out of there. Hit one in the beer garden out there. 21 homers at the age of 20. In the air to center, Kane eases back. A lot of fly ball outs for Chris Narvison here tonight. Only two ground ball outs for Narvison. A fielder's choice to end the first. And Morrison grounded out the short to lead off the sixth. But Narvison has been very good. He's struck out five. He's only allowed the one walk. Five hits, one on the home run. But again, first inning trouble to give up two of his five. Base hits in the first that cost him a run. He's been able to take a little off, add a little bit. For the most part, been able to keep the baseball off the sweet spot of the bat. Todd Coffey getting loose just in case. Narvison with two outs now, and Volstad, his mound opponent, at the plate. Volstad, by the way, on the mound has six shutout innings and now 15 consecutive scoreless after his nine shutout innings against the Cardinals last Monday. And the three starts before his last time out, Volstead was not very good. They hit him up pretty well. You have a nine inning game not allowing a run and you still have a six ERA and four starts in September that means your starts before that weren't very good. That's a good point. Now there was a, a three start stretch for Volstad where he gave up 16 earned runs in three starts twice to the Nationals once to the Phillies. But that all turned around last Monday and he's kept it going here tonight. 
And now he's got a base hit. That's going to go to the wall. So Chris Volstad, who came into that at bat, hitting 080 with his fifth hit of the season. It's a two out double. They can never, you know, take anything for granted in this game. You got a guy up there that has had a tough time making contact, getting base hits. And now he's in scoring position for the top of the order, and that's going to be it for him. He got ahead 0 2 and then just couldn't put him away. A high fastball, and Volstad able to center on it and get himself a two out double. Well, Narvison is out. No chance to win this game tonight. He is on the hook for the loss. As Ken Maka goes to the bullpen, it'll be Narvison's final start at Miller Park. And Coffey sprints his way in. Chris Volstad, the Feltko call to the pin is Todd Coffey. You see Todd Coffey in his 66th game this year, 447 earned run average. Probably looking to get an out and probably Ken Mock go to the bullpen once again. You know, Coffey's last appearance Thursday against the Marlins a couple of days ago tossed a scoreless ninth inning. Maka makes a change with the leadoff hitter Cameron Maven coming up. Who had two hits against. Chris Narvison. Two outs two to nothing a runners in for the fish. A home run by Mike Stanton. The other run was scored in the first inning Logan Morrison had an RBI single. But very little offense tonight at this point. Only three hits for the brew crew Narvison has one of them. Saw where the Mets just scored four runs in the seventh inning. They were down two to nothing when that inning started. As Kyle Kendrick was pitching at Jim, but he ran into trouble in the seventh, and the Mets have scored four times. And they lead Philadelphia now four to two. The Phillies, the hottest team in all of baseball right now. Yeah, they've won 11 straight. They have the best home record in all of baseball, the Phillies, 54 and 28. And that game is in Philadelphia tonight. 
The Phillies now have an elimination number of two. The Braves won tonight. Or earlier today, I should say, Derek Lowe, part of a shutout against the Washington Nationals today. So the Twins are in, the Texas Rangers are in. Rangers clinched a playoff berth today, beating Oakland. It might be the Phillies next. It's going to be a while before the National League West is going to be decided, though. That will go down to the last weekend. San Francisco plays San Diego. Swing and a miss, Maven down on strikes. Inning is over. But the Marlins add to their lead a home run by Mike Stanton. And it is two to nothing, Florida. Middle of the order. Musinger's game summary. Logan Morrison put the Marlins on the board first in the first at an RBI single with one out, scoring Cameron Maben. And then Narvison held the Marlins in check thanks to some spectacular defense. This was a catch in the second inning by Lorenzo Cade and Rob Brad Davis of extra bases. Narvison cruised along through innings two through six. At one point, he had retired six in a row. Meanwhile, Chris Volstad has 15 consecutive scoreless innings going, going back to his last start. Mike Stanton with his 21st home run at the age of 20. He gives the Marlins a 2 to nothing lead. He's had some kind of series. Mike Stanton has thrown out two base runners. He's shown a great arm. Got a couple of hits, and now a home run. But the big bats are coming up for the Brewers. Braun, Fielder, and McGee. Down a pair. Third time through the batting order for Chris Volstead. Who has faced just two over the minimum right now. Well, the impressive thing about Volstead in that 15 consecutive scoreless innings. He's only struck out five in that stretch. I mean, he only had three strikeouts against the Cardinals. Two tonight. So he's making his pitches, keeping the ball down, and... Uh, now doing a very good job once again tonight. The Brewers have won the first two games of this series. And if they're going to finish at 500 this year, they're going to have to win out. The Brewers are nine games under at this point with nine to play. Ozzy Martinez takes care of Braun for out number one. Every inning, Volstad has been able to get the leadoff hitter. It makes your job out on the mound much easier when you're able to do that. Just three hits for Milwaukee so far. Fielder is 0 for 2. A couple of fly ball outs to center field. Efficient. 
17 pitch third inning. He faced four batters in that inning. That's the most he's faced in any inning tonight. So the goal of the Brewers is to hope that they get him out of the ball game, get to that bullpen, but he's only got 81 pitches right now. There's a good start of base hit to right. Fielder singles. And here comes Casey McGee representing the time run. And got that pitch up the strike zone just a little bit. A little bit too much of the plate. It looked like Davis wanted it inside and Volstead put it right down the middle. And Prince able to hammer it in the right. Well, Casey McGee has been a big story, He's setting at 99 RBIs. 0 for 2 tonight against Volstad, a ground out and a fly ball out. The league leader in runs batted in in the National League is Carlos Gonzalez with 113. And Gonzalez is going to win a batting title as well this year. He's hitting 340. Pujols is the league leader in home runs with 41. Starting play today, McGee, seventh in the league in RBIs. He's tied with Dan Ugla. Got under one. It's been a familiar theme tonight against Volstead. A lot of off balance swings and outs in the air. Two gone in the inning. Been a lot of fastballs, too. I mean, he hadn't seen too many breaking pitches, maybe a, a slider or two, and maybe a change up once in a while, but a lot of sinking fastballs. That's. Pretty much what he's been throwing tonight. Taking a little off, adding a little bit. He's been up as high as only 91 miles an hour. All about location. Kane just foul. Almost an extra base hit for Lorenzo Kane. Kane is 0 for 2. Maybe finding the barrel with one will give him a little confidence here. And he bangs one right back up the middle. A base hit. So two hits in the inning for the first time tonight against Volstad. And now the tying run is aboard. The go ahead run will come up and. Lorenzo Kane with his first hit of the game. Yeah, same pitch. This time able to lay back a little bit, wait for it, and bang it right back through the middle. That time, or I should say, a man in scoring position, tying run on base. And listen to this hand for Craig Council, pinch hitting. Wisconsin native, they love him here. And he'll get a shot with two men aboard. Council is pinch hitting for Alcides Escobar. And that repair shed that Ken Maka talks about with Escobar is starting to look more like a doghouse, maybe. Yeah, Ken Maga does not like it when Escobar pops up and he flew out and popped up to right his last time up. Council with a base hit. They will not challenge Mike Stanton. Why would you? He's already thrown out two in this series. And now the bases are loaded, but two men are out. Now you don't want to run on the right fielder in this game. And Stanton with a cannon. And Prince's run doesn't mean anything anyway. You don't want to make the last out at home plate unless it is the tying run. But Craig Council does not disappoint the fans here at Miller Park. And still another pinch hit by the Brewers. 
The council now at 12 pinch hits this year. And a batting average well over 300 this season. He comes in, he delivers against his old club. Maybe a little fatigue. That fastball straight as a string up in the zone and council able to pound it into right field. About that rocket. <laughs> Mike Stanton. So a pitching change here. At the very least, Council gets Volstead out of the game. We'll take a break. Bases are loaded. Three hits in the inning. Volstad is out, and here comes Jose Veras. Yeah, good numbers for Veras. Look at the strikeout to innings pitch. 49 against 44 and two thirds innings for Veras. Last year he played, he pitched for the Yankees and the Cleveland Indians. So he has major league experience. Bases loaded, two outs. Here is George Kataris. Fielder over at third. He's singled. And Kane and Council with singles as well. Kane's and Council's hits came with two outs in the inning. Holstead is out, six and two thirds. And Kataris into center field. It's right at Maven. Boy, a bad break for the Brewers. Guitar is hit it like a bullet. But the inning is over, and the Brewers come up empty.
Chris Withers, our producer tonight. Michael Odino directing. Brian Mikulogic in the truck as well, doing whatever he does. Fan appreciation night. Over 34,000 on hand to see this one. Brewers are trying to make it four consecutive wins. They have taken the first two games in this series. But a good pitching matchup so far. Council stays in the game to play short after a pinch hit single in the seventh inning. Second to last game at Miller Park this year. We'll wrap it up tomorrow in the regular season. And then we'll have to wait until 2011. I'm glad you said it that way this time. <laughs> As opposed to penultimate? Yeah. <laughs> I just do that for you, right? I know. I know you do. I know what it is now. It's kind of lost its luster. But it's still funny. You could use it on the banquet circuit next year. <laughs> By the way, if you're wondering about the 2011 schedule, the Brewers will open on the road in Cincinnati on March 31st. So they'll finish 2010 in Cincinnati and will open 2011. We might as well just stay there. <laughs> now the Brewers' home opener. He is April 4th, which is a Monday against the Atlanta Braves. So Monday, April 4th, the home opener here at Miller Park. It'll be the Braves for four, the Cubs for three. That'll get us started. Yep. The uh, part of the season that I'm going to be most interested in is starting in June 17th through July 3rd. Interleague play with the Red Sox, the Rays, the Twins, the Yankees, and then the Twins again. If the Brewers can survive that run as fun as it'll be to go to Fenway and go to Yankee Stadium. If the Brewers survive that trek they're going to be in good shape. That's going to be tough. That hits the bag. And that's going to go as a base hit. Go figure huh. George Guitaris hits a line drive missile for an out with the bases loaded. Ozzy Martinez hits the bag for a base hit. That little bit either way for George, that would have cleared the bases. But Casey was there, hit the corner of the bag and hopped up in the air, no chance. Lead off base runner for the Florida Marlins. They've been able to do that quite a bit tonight. But they've only been able to score twice. And now Logan Morrison with a runner on. What's your initial analysis of the 2011 schedule? Yep. I know you come up with a formula outside the interleague, right? Which is a tough interleague schedule for anybody. I mean, anytime you got to face the Rays, the Yankees, Tampa Bay is going to have a much different look to them next year than they do this year. But still, you figure they're going to be good. Twins are going to be good again. They'll get Joe Nathan back. The Brewers don't have as tough of a stretch on the road to begin the season as they did a year ago or this year I should say they do have a three city trip April 11th to the 20th but the, the Brewers started their season this year with three different three consecutive three city trips tough way to start. A lot of road games in April next year. Middle of the month. Now the Brewers with this beautiful stadium with a roof won't be in it much first month of the season. Somebody else might though. You yeah. never know. Well, except for Cincinnati. That's the first road trip but, but really not a road trip. The Brewers will probably go right from spring training to Cincinnati. But the uh, two trips after that are three city trips, but then the schedule kind of levels out a little bit. 
That'll be fun to get back to Fenway Park and see the Brewers in the new Yankee Stadium for the first time. Bouncing ball, and that is gloved by Council. Look at that play. Craig Council. Yeah, he's something else, isn't he? Craig Council. He will never let you down when you put him in a ball game. He'll always make the plays, he'll give you a tough at bat. Got to believe he's going to want to play another year. Brewers would love to have him. You now, Morrison runs pretty well, and Council got him easily at first base. That's a heck of a play. He was on the second base side of the bag when he grabbed it. Time an off balance throw right on the money to get him. 40 years young. Still making the athletic plays up the middle. It will be fun though next year to have the first game of the year. March 31st. Right. In Cincinnati. The traditional opener in Cincinnati. And Brewers have Friday off the following day. It's already sounding like a night at the precinct. Two well, nights at the precinct, Thursday and Friday. <laughs> That's right. It's one of our favorite stops in the <laughs> Queen City of Cincinnati. You got to go to Izzy's, get a turkey Reuben, and then go to the precinct. And if you want to hang out with our crew, you can go to O'Malley's. O'Malley's in the alley. <laughs> Which is right where they belong. Absolutely. <laughs> One day they're going to put a roof on that place. <laughs> Got a nice hat shop in Cincinnati too. <laughs> Ugla to Council. Oh, he bobbled. He had a play in front of him. And before he got it in his glove, it bounces in and out. He was thinking about a throw. And everybody is safe. That'll be an error on Craig Council a very rare error. That's my fault. I, I said that he will never hurt you defensively. will always make the play which he does that one got him on the heel of the glove and you're right. He was thinking about that throw to third base before he had it. Ball jumps up on him a little bit. Off the wrist and. No play that'll be an error. First and third now. One out in the inning. And a two to nothing Marlins lead. We play in the eighth. Here's Gabby Sanchez. Broken bat. And that's going to be a base hit. A run is in. Well, so the Marlins cash in. It's three to nothing now. Sanchez with an RBI. That's his 82nd. On an infield hit. First hit of the series for Sanchez. Brewers have done a nice job. With him in this series, and you know, Council knocks it down and not able to make the play, it'll be a base hit. They have three to nothing lead now for the fish. Council still thinking about that error. Here's Mike Stanton. How about Todd Coffey's inning? He deserves better. That leadoff hitter hit third base. Got an error now, an infield hit. Marlins have two on and a run in without delivering one to the outfield yet. Tied him up. Sinker. Looks like that's where you have to pitch him. Got to get it in on his hands, but the problem with that is you leave it out over the plate. Ends up in the seats. He handles the ball away from him very well. Has good opposite field power. Stan Homer his last time up. His 21st of the year. The Brewers in the bottom of the eighth will have a pinch hitter to start the inning, most likely Joe England. And then to the top of the order, Weeks and Hart. 
If anybody gets on, Braun will bat. Take you back to the last inning, the seventh. Mike Stanton leading off and off the end of the bat. Look where he hits this ball. Second level above the Friday's front row sports grill. Some kind of power in this kid's bat for pitch, sure. Pitch that away from That's where he likes it. Got to crowd him in on his hands with the hard stuff. And a swing and a miss. So Coffey strikes him out. Got him to chase one that time. And Stanton... He's second out in the inning. Coffee needed that. Good sinker. Got the plate, but it was down out of the strike zone. And you now the big swing from Stanton comes up empty. Two outs, and it's Wes Helms now. Zach Braddock gets loose. We're talking about some of the great moments in Brewers history. We've been voting on that this year and showcasing some of those great moments. Of course, uh, Ryan Braun's home run, CC Sabathia, Cecil Cooper's RBI back in '82. But if you go a layer deep, you might put Wes Helms on that list as well. As a member of the Florida Marlins in '08, he hit a home run in the. Seventh inning against the New York Mets to give the Marlins the lead for good. It was that win over the Mets that allowed the Brewers to capture the wild card. As Helms rolls to council, the inning is over, but an error in the eighth, a run scores, and it's three to nothing. Fish. Attack a couple of runs on in the late innings, and they lead three to nothing as we head to the bottom of the eighth. And a new pitcher for manager Edwin Rodriguez. It is Leo Nunez. Yeah, they bring on their closer. 29 saves for Nunez in 37 opportunities. Only 63 punch outs in 16 and third innings. He's only allowed five home runs. Had a rough go of it lately. He has actually lost his closer's job to Clay Hensley. So it's Nunez who gets the eighth. And Joe England will pinch hit for the Brewers. Down three. Ricky Weeks due up next, the top of the order as England takes a strike. Joe England has five triples this year, four of them as a pinch hitter. And his last pinch hit was a triple. 
last night. He tripled, he drove it around, he scored a run. 20 pinch hits this year. Leads all of baseball. In a role that England has never filled before. He's always been kind of a platoon player, utility player, but never a pinch hitter. I mean, exclusively a pinch hitter. He hasn't played much this season. Right, well, he spent most of his career in the American League where you don't use pinch hitters all that much. And I tell you, he's made a name for himself in that role, and he's going to have a nice career if he continues at the pace that he set for himself this year. You notice no left handers getting up in that bullpen. The Marlins have none. They have Will Omen that's listed on the. In the notes, but he, he's out for the season. I'm told that he can't pitch, so nothing but right handers out in that Marlins bullpen. As Nunez puts it right by England, a strikeout. Nunez, good fastball. He's got that live arm, herky jerky delivery, and elevates the fastball up in the zone, and England swings right through it. Last time we saw Nunez, Way back in June, he was the closer and he was throwing about 75 80% changeups. He has a good fastball, but his changeup was great, but maybe leaning on that changeup too much. Brock mentioned his struggles lately. You go back 17 appearances for Leo Nunez, his ERA is near seven. That's how bad it's been for Leo Nunez lately. Maybe just uh, running out of gas. Who knows? Well, 29 saves. That's a heck of a season. He just has not been able to get out lately. Well, we were wondering in June with a 95, 97 mile an hour fastball, why why would you use it more often? But he was effective against the Brewers with that changeup. That's an 86 mile an hour changeup. I mean, think about that. He throws in the mid 90s and the changeup at 86. You can see a very bad month of August. 10 appearances, ERA over nine. He's been throwing better lately. Has eight blown saves this year, which is why he lost that closer's role. Ricky Weeks with one away. He's faced him twice. Weeks shoots it foul. Look out. Man, oh man, that is scary. Weeks almost hit Corey Hart in the on deck circle. And then it just goes screaming into the stands. And let's hope everybody's all right up there. Those can do damage. Yeah. And even if you're watching, you really can't do much about those that go into the seats. All you have to do is ask Logan Morrison of the Florida Marlins about the danger of a shot like that. Watch Corey Hart here. Oh. And that's about the spot where Logan Morgan was standing when he got hit. Logan Morrison, rather. As Weeks strikes out. Not often you see a ball hit that hard. Go in that direction. He got hit in the eye. Corey Hart did not. Here's that fastball you were talking about. 94, 96 miles an hour. Right on the outside corner. So Nunez with two quick outs. Back to back K's. Here's Corey Hart. And he probably won't see anything as fast as what he just saw off the bat of weeks passing in front of his face. It's been a while since John Axford pitched. In six days. Yeah, we could go against the Giants. That's a long time for a closer. He got his 22nd save of the year. Well, last night the Brewers were in a save situation until they scored a couple of runs in the eighth inning. 
And instead of Axford, it was Trevor Hoffman who came in. But Axford's coming in for the ninth, regardless, it looks like tonight. The 3 1. Count goes full. So we're talking about this this foul ball. Logan Morrison took a shot. Emilio Bonifacio, the batter, and uh, very similar to what happened with uh, Weeks and Hart, except this one hit Logan Morrison, and he went down, and amazingly, he was able to continue to play the next day, and look at the shiner under his eye. That's amazing. You see the angle? He was actually behind the batter. As Hart strikes out, Nunez strikes out the side, and we head to the ninth. can come up with some magic in the bottom of the ninth inning right now the Brewers trail three to nothing <laughs> as they're dancing it up here on fan appreciation night not John Axford John Stashford who says fans have been calling for the handlebar mustache I'm not sure Axford is going there again but you never know. He's sneaky yeah, that way. Yeah, there's only one handlebar guy that, uh, you know, for Milwaukee. I think Axe Man understands that. But he's been very good lately. Hasn't allowed an earned run in his last 13 appearances and hasn't given up a hit in his last six. That's how good he's been. A 2.15 ERA, 22 out of 24 in saves. Well, we'll see how fresh his arm is. And we'll check his command in this game after. A long layoff of six days. Facing Brad Davis to start the inning. Pitcher spot is due up next. And one away. So one gone, Scott Cousins will pinch hit. Cousins had a pinch hit triple last night. For the Brewers in the ninth, Ryan Braun will lead off, then Fielder, then McGee. And right now, the Brewers are down three. Axford hoping to keep it that way. Yeah, right. Cousins will always be able to say that he got a base hit off of Trevor Hoffman. A triple came in the ninth against Trevor. It's possible that it could be the the last hit that Hoffman ever gives up. You never know. I just wonder what's going through the mind of Trevor Hoffman as this season winds down last week of the year. Will he come back? What's 
what are his thoughts? You, you, got, you always have to wonder to yourself, and as he sits in that bullpen, it's always a tough decision for a player. Only the best of which actually get to make that decision. Yeah, most of us have it made for us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Whether it's to end a short major league career or to never even get a chance right. in professional baseball. That's right. Yeah. Everybody's done sometime. And for 95%, the decision is made for you. <laughs> That's right. And Trevor understands that. There's Clay Hensley. The Marlins closer. They have two of them. Hensley is the man who gets the chance at saves these days. Down the right field line. That is a fair ball. That's going to go to the wall. Cousins speeding around second, and he'll end up at third with a triple. Again. Back to back triples in consecutive nights for pinch hit appearances. Well, both in the ninth inning. This one coming off John Axford. They got a nice swing. His triple was just about the same spot down in that corner in right field. This time turning around a fastball from Axford. About 10 miles an hour more than the one he hit against Hoffman. Really cuts that bag close. At good speed. Well, just one out. That's going to bring the infield in. Three to nothing Marlins. Axford could use a strikeout here. Strike on the corner. If you're just joining us, we told you that about San Diego. They beat the Reds earlier today, four to three. Joey Votto hit his 36 homer, but the Reds cannot add to their magic number despite the Cardinals losing today. It's a swing and a miss by Maven. Cardinals lost to the Cubs 7 3. The Braves won 5 0. Derek Lowe is 15th win. So the Braves and the Padres stay in a battle for the wild card. Padres stayed close to the Giants. Giants are underway with Colorado. San Francisco leads 3 2 in the bottom of the fourth. Strike call. Axford rings up Maven. Yep, maybe know it. A fastball in the inside corner. So George set up on the corner and Axford put it right there. Didn't even have to move the glove. Two outs now. First strikeout for Axford. And here's Ozzy Martinez. The Mets still leading in Philadelphia. 5 2 Mets over the Phillies in the ninth. They're in the bottom of the ninth now. Ryan Howard is homered for the Phillies, number 31. So he and Fielder with 31 home runs apiece this year. Those two tied for the RBI lead last year. Most RBIs in the big leagues. So their numbers continue to track in a similar fashion. In the right center, over is Kane. He lays out and he drops the baseball. It was a great effort, but the ball pops free. And it's going to be an RBI double for the Marlins and Ozzy Martinez. He had it in the glove and just could not keep a hold of it. As he hit the ground and rolled around. Boy, what a great job by Lorenzo Kane just to get there. Look how quickly he closes the gap out there in right center. Had it, but trickled out. Boy, he's quick. Takes a good angle on the baseball. Never really did have it completely in the glove. On the heel, and once he hit the ground, it jarred loose. Four to nothing, Marlins.
Ozzy Martinez with his second hit. Kane still a little shaken up. He rolled over the baseball. The ball kind of just rolled down his right side. Got him on the hip, the thigh. Actually went too far. Not only did he get there, he went a little bit too far to catch that baseball. Actually hit him on the heel of the glove and not able to hold on. He'll get another chance. That ball's pretty well hit. Kane will run it down. Inning is over, but the Marlins add to it. Four to nothing fish. We head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Last call for the Brewers. We head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Brewers baseball on WMLW tonight, and we'll see if there's going to be a comeback in the offing for Milwaukee. Braun Fielder and McGee to start it. A four to nothing Marlins lead, and they'll turn it over to the men now closing games for the Marlins. Clay Hensley. And he notched his first career save back on September 10th against the Nationals. Actually saved all three games in that series. A teammate. A former teammate of Trevor Hoffman with the San Diego Padres. Well, he was with Hoffman in 05, 06, and briefly in 07 as a member of the Padres. So Hensley against Ryan Braun, who is 0 for 3 tonight. Bouncer to third. Uh, Wes Helms will take care of Braun for the first out. Don't forget tomorrow is the final home game of the season here at Miller Park. It's a matinee, a 110 start. The Brewers will send up Chris Capuano. And the Florida Marlins will send up their right hander, Adalberto Mendez. The Brewers will hit the road. Seven games on the road to finish the season. Well, I hope if you're uh, thinking about something to do, you want to catch the Brewers one last time at Miller Park. Come out tomorrow. We'd love to have you. Hasn't been the kind of season anybody had hoped for. Brewers are under 500, but always fun to come to the ballpark and an experience on its own. Never know what you're going to see when you come out here. It's a great thing about baseball. Yep. As many games as you and I see every day, it's amazing. Sometimes you'll see something you've never seen before. As many plays as we see, you'd think it'd be hard to impress us, and yet it feels like we're impressed 
every night. And, every, and sometimes it's in the stands that we see things we've never seen before. <laughs> That's true. This fielder pulls one foul in the seats. That's what's great about baseball. Saw a great catch tonight, Lorenzo Kane. Right center. Brewers trying to avoid their 14th shutout of the season. That's a lot for a team that swings the bat this well. Statistically, the Brewers one of the better offenses in the National League. It's hard to believe they've been shut out 13 times this year. Yep, fourth in the league in runs. Second and homer. Fielder trying to get it to McGee. Casey still sitting on 99 RBIs. In the air to center. And Cameron Maven will make the call and the catch. Two outs. How about a big fly here for Casey to get 100 ribbies? I like that idea. I like that. Let's go, Case. Broken bat. Maven coming in. That's a base hit. So McGee singles, and the Brewers are still alive here in the ninth inning. That'll send up Lorenzo Kane. It's only the First hit for McGee, the seventh for the Brewers tonight. All singles for the Brew Crew tonight. Kane singled his last time up. One for three at the plate. Chris Volstad is the pitcher of record on the win side. Six and two thirds of scoreless baseball and his uh, consecutive scoreless inning streak continues. At 15. Chris Narvison on the hook for the loss. He pitched well but ran into a buzzsaw tonight in his mound opponent Volstad. Narvison went six and two thirds gave up just two runs. Struck out five. And the Brewers are hoping for a two out rally here to take them off the hook. It's going to take a lot of damage down four with two outs in the ninth inning. Back on Fox Sports Wisconsin tomorrow afternoon. 12.30 is their time. Looking forward to seeing Chris Capuano again. It'll be his last start at Miller Park this year. Yeah, he's been throwing well. Quite a comeback story. We'll have a sit down with Capuano tomorrow. An interview with the Brewers left-hander for Brewers Live tomorrow. Full count, two outs. McGee takes off. And a base hit to right. Lorenzo Kane keeps it alive. Two on now with two outs. Yep, Hensley hung a slider. And Lorenzo doing a nice job. Back to back at bats. Breaking pitches up in the zone. Base hit to center in the seventh. And hits one hard to right out of the reach of Ugla for his second base hit tonight. Able to get on top of that high slider and drive it to right field.
Here's Craig Council. Tying run in the on deck circle. That was a big run the Marlins posted in the ninth. And Council trying to do anything he can to bring that tying run to the plate. George Kataris will hit next. Ronan Fielder retired quickly. McGee and Kane with base hits. And a strike from Hensley. One and one the count. Council pinch hit in the seventh. Single. The Brewers stranded the bases loaded. Kataris hit a line drive right at Cameron Maven with the bases full. That could have changed the game if he finds a gap. Good block back there by Davis. He's handled himself pretty well behind home plate. Blocks the ball well. That's a tough pitch right Ooh. there. Textbook. Rally hats are on. In the center field, Maven is coming in. He's got it for the out. And the ball game is over. The Florida Marlins win for the first time here in Milwaukee. A final score of four to nothing as Volstad wins over Chris Narvison. That'll do it for us from Miller Park. Brewers baseball returns to Fox Sports Wisconsin tomorrow starting at 12:30 with the pre-